So we're going to go ahead and jump straight into this project. First thing I am doing is I'm creating a straight edge. I've got a straight edge there, double-sided tape, and a flush trim bit on my homemade router table. And I'm also, I, just to do it a little differently, I'm also doing it with a plunge router there. After I've got my straight edge, I'm just trimming up the other end. I took the thinnest boards and basically used those as my template, so to speak. So I have a uniform uh, depth on all of my boards. And I'm trimming up the opposite edge from my straight edge that I created. My next step is cutting the boards to length. I start with just cutting a little bit off of the end and then making everything uh, to length from there. If you do notice that uh, these boards are a little wobbly, a little warped, I didn't flatten them at all. They're just some common boards from a local um, hardware <laughs> dealer. Uh, you probably know which one of the large chains that I'm talking about. Now I have both ends clamped together and I'm just putting a, a spot for each of the shelves. And I have a three quarter inch uh, bit on my plunge router there. The shelves are all three quarter inches. And so I'm just putting those. The heights I'm doing is uh, 12, 11, and 10 inches. That bottom shelf is set two inches up, up from the, the ground so that we can put a little uh, face on there. My son wanted to uh, have that at the bottom and since this is his bookshelf he got to design it as he wanted and we're just removing some of the tear out with a couple chisels right now. So each of the shelves and the ends will get uh, sanding with a 60 grit. We do a 110 and then a final 220 at the end here. Look at that boy go. His mad sanding skills are available uh, for lease at your convenience. I am just kidding about that. He is in school full time and he also does karate on the side. So because we're using a water-based finish, we're going to just spray down with a little bit of water, raise the grain before our final uh, sanding on this. Like I said, we're going to do in a 220 grit sanding on the entire project here. At this point I'm just taking off the edges, uh, the, just the sharp edges with a uh, planer here. He didn't want to do a round over or anything on the shelves. I actually did a uh, round over on my daughter's uh, bookshelf, but he wanted kind of more of that, um, just the flat edge there. So I'm just taking those off with a with a uh, planer here. I could have used a smaller block plane, but um, just using this one because that's what I had out and that's what I wanted to use. So we're doing the dry fit right now. This is a good time to um, not only make sure everything fits, but uh, I use this as an opportunity to see how best my glue up is going to go. Um, if you notice here, I was kind of having a, a hard time with the, the warpage of the shelves and everything uh, with that holding in. So I had my son kind of give me a hand. So I found that on this one, at least the best thing was to just kind of push it together with the clamps and then just kind of with the, the mallet there just kind of knock it into place a little bit. Um, this was before I made that handy dandy 
mallet from my Christmas tree. If you didn't watch that video, check out the that video. Um, but I didn't have that here, so I'm using the rubber mallet. Now we're doing our final glue up, and I am using what I learned from my dry fit to make sure that it goes together nice and smoothly. So I'm going to use this time here to kind of explain. So my son uh, wanted a bookshelf that kid reads more than anybody I know. And his uh, bookshelf that he had was my old one from when I was a kid. It was falling apart. It literally, the shelf fell down. And uh, we told him a year ago that um, we would be doing his bookshelf for Christmas. But because of my back injury, I was unable to do this with him. So we are finally getting around to it. And in the top here, I'm just using some 18 gauge brad nails to hold the top together. This is one of the only two spots that I'm using brad nails. Everything else is glued up. Now I'm just kind of removing some of that glue up with uh, just an old chisel here. I'm not using anything nice. I have found that with the glue that I was using, if you wait an hour and just kind of scrape it off, it comes right off. I wasn't given that luxury on this one, so it did give me a little bit longer to remove the glue up. Please don't ask me why I am putting stain and finish on the very bottom that you won't see, but um, that's what we did. And... So that's what's happening. The original plan was uh, that both of us were going to keep the, the bookshelf laying down like this to do the entire uh, stain and finish. I kind of forgot that my son was as short as he is. I'm not calling him short. He's just still pretty young. Probably going to end up taller than I am. But um, otherwise, I might have stained this entire thing first. Uh, I decided that I was going to glue it all up together and then put the stain on given the opportunity again to do it you know this exact same bookshelf I might do it a little differently um, just depends on where you are you know what makes the most sense I think for this one because it was kind of a pain in the butt to uh, stain and finish after it was put together I might decide to put the stain and finish on before the final glue up And now I am cutting the pieces for the frame, uh, for the face of the bookshelf here while we're waiting for that um, stain to, to dry. Just running this through the bandsaw to get the, the depth down. I didn't want to run it through the table saw and cut out more material. I'm 
just bought this bandsaw a little while ago second hand so i wanted to try it out my son picked out the design or the pattern that he wanted to based on some of the um the router bits that i had so that's what i'm doing is i'm just putting my um, little flare on it uh, i'm doing this because of how much material is getting taken out at a single time I am doing this in multiple passes, um, cutting some of that out, but um, yeah, so that's what's happening here. And the way that I'm doing this also, it gives it a little um, different texture instead of a, a uniform uh, edge through the whole thing. Kind of give it a, an interesting look, I believe. Um, you, you know, that's everybody's style is a little bit different. So this is my, I don't know, my personal flair put into this. I hope my son enjoys it. He says he does, and um, I think he was super excited. I did some of this while he was at school or you know otherwise busy, but uh, I did have him help me with quite a bit of it. And then same thing with the shelves and the sides. I'm just doing a, a rough 60 grit followed by a 110 and then a final 220 grit sanding on each of these. And because of the contour that's on here that we put in, I'm using a, a dowel wrapped with some sandpaper to do the little, well, I guess the contours of the, the edges there. And this is the back, it's just a, actually it's a sheet of plywood I've had sitting in the basement for I don't know how long that I finally put to use or found a use for. Um, had it for a different project that I kind of altered the plans for. And so I'm doing the same thing, except I'm not doing the 60 grit sanding on this because it is plywood, especially it's a, I think it's a eighth inch uh, plywood. You don't want to go too much, you don't want to, sand too aggressively because you will sand right through those plies so I, I am just doing a 110 and then a 220 sanding so I am cutting the at the edges to final length here and what I'm doing to can to keep that tear out is I just put it some painters tape on there and that got rid of the the tear out to match the contour on the top with the the face on the front I traced the, the, that contour and I'm just using that uh, coping saw just to get that final edge there and then uh, file just to make sure that everything's um, nice and flush. It really didn't go together as flush as I wanted to, but um, you know, live and learn, I guess, huh? And here I'm just trying to match that um, that edge up if you see what I was doing there. And same thing, just running. Now I've got my uh, block uh, block plane out and just planing the edges, the sharp edges there, just to make it a little bit nice and smooth. And then finishing it with a 220 grit sanding. And this little piece here is for the top that I was talking about. Uh, we did a little lip around the top. My son has a problem with the cats knocking stuff off of his bookshelf. So we put a lip on the top there, hopefully to keep that uh, down a little bit. And same as with everything else, I'm just doing a uh, one coat of water-based uh, espresso stain from General Finishes on here. I could probably put a link to, the, to that in the description. Um, I will also, if you're watching this through the website, I will probably 
put a link in the um, description on there as well. So yeah, just doing all the little pieces here. It's a little difficult um, with those pieces trying to move around on me. So I just have my glove uh, put at the end to keep it from sliding around. I'm using a foam brush on this because that's just kind of what I felt worked the best. Usually I just use some blue shop towels and do that, but for this, that uh, little sponge brush that I have worked the best. And now I'm just, same thing, doing, doing the back here. And with everything else, this stain, I only needed one uh, coat of the stain on here. If I put a couple, it gets super dark. I did this uh, stain on a couple other things. I made a table with it, and I did a couple uh, a couple coats of the stain and it almost looks like black paint or just a super dark brown paint so a single coat gives it that um, it doesn't make it look unfinished but it gives that opportunity for the grain to poke through so as you see I'm using a water-based uh, satin finish on here again from general finishes And with the finish, I did three coats of the finish on there. Gives it that nice protective layer. But I, I really like their water-based stain because it doesn't give it that, um, you know, artificial or manufactured look to it. It does really look um, like it's homemade and it still gives that protective uh, layer. So, again, just putting that layer of finish on the back of the bookshelf. If you can translate our little mouse talk from the super sped up here, the joke is that uh, from the karate kid, he's doing the paint the fence here. I had him doing the, the parts that he could reach and I was doing the parts that I could reach. Felt that it was a little easier to put it up on the workbench and do it from here. Then I was able to reach the top and he was able to reach the bottom a little easier. I think moving it onto the, the workbench did make it a little bit easier, but I still think for this particular bookshelf, I probably would rather do all of the stain and finish in the, um, the pre-glue up period instead of afterwards. So for all of you who are not mice, I will translate. That means get your hands dirty and just use your finger to spread that glue around. So if you don't already, please, if you wouldn't mind clicking the subscribe button, giving us the thumbs up, and you can check us out at thefightwithdepression.com, or you can also now go to tofurwood.com. So we're using the Tight Bond 3 here. Um, it has a little quicker dry time. Uh, you still don't want to put any um, strain on the joints or anything for at least 12 hours. But um, because we are clamping this in stages, if you see we're just doing the bottom first, we're working our way up essentially. And uh, we're gluing our way from the bottom to the top. So I clamped it for about an hour each and then moved up um, 
you know, we're just making sure we're not, again, putting any stress on those joints. So did that little bottom apron piece or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm doing the sides. We didn't do a face piece on that, um, on any of the shelves. We, I kind of, I don't know if I talked my son into it. I said I liked the recessed shelf look. Um, he agreed. I, I hope he likes it. Um, but yeah, each of the shelves is recessed a little bit behind that face. I like that look on this, at least on this bookshelf. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. So I'm going to explain to him here that uh, we're working our way from one side to the other to keep it that um, back piece from kind of bowing in the middle. If you do each side or the corners or something like that, then you can get to the middle and it's uh, kind of pushing out a little bit. So I told him we're working from one way to the one way to the other, and then he was asking to do this. I think he likes the power tool part of you know these projects so um, let him use the brad nailer better under supervision he's taken a or took a class in school where they're doing a lot of projects like this so he wanted to kind of translate to th that to his own his own project and you know one of the things that we talk about as maintaining and improving our mental health is being able to to learn new skills and everything so what better way to teach my son that when he's young than to actually put it into practice and if you didn't notice uh, my wife had brought me down an old-fashioned too so Estes and go to the Stanley to their whiskey <laughs> you should go to Elkins distillery in Estes Park Colorado That was my little shameless plug for the whiskey that I like with my old fashioned. But here's the downfall of putting this up on the workbench when my son is a little bit shorter than I am, is that Molly had to come and give a hand putting the clamps on. But uh, yeah, put the clamps on and then he's at least tall enough to reach. Uh, Molly's giving her approval there. And then that little edge piece across the top, I'm just putting one uh, little brad nail in the top just to hold it in place while that glue is drying. And then the final removal of the clamps. So there it is. His final bookshelf in place with his multiple books that he likes to read. And thank you for watching.